I'm Ellen Mary. And I'm Michael Perry. And he's a plant geek. And she's a plant addict. And, and this, this is, is the Plant Based Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> This is more than just a gardening podcast. We'll be exploring the world of plants from every possible angle. We'll be talking about plant-based diets, plant materials and fabrics, the well-being qualities of plants, and giving plenty of gardening tips and tricks. So we'll be chatting worldwide to companies and individuals that are being creative with plants in new and exciting ways. From fabulous flower crowns to foliage-filled lounges, botanical moisturizers to bamboo clothing it's all here and it's all made of plants Sutton's suppliers of gardening products since 1806 sponsor the plant-based podcast visit them online at suttons.co.uk we're here enjoying a lovely cup of herbal tea at the Hackney Herbal HQ with Nat. And we're going to learn more about the wonderful world of herbs, all the way through from herb craft to caffeine-free drinks that you can create with herbs. Also how to use herbs in the home for quick remedies and, of course, using them in recipes and for getting all that goodness out of our lovely herbs. I've loved herbs ever since I was a really young kid, but Nat is going to tell us more about the story behind Hackney Herbal. So how did it all begin? <laughs> yeah, so uh, similarly, I also really liked herbs from a young age. Uh-huh. And um, when I moved to Hackney um, and I was living in a house that didn't have a garden and I ended up joining a community garden just to have some space to grow some stuff, meet local people. And through that, I became really interested in growing herbs and learning about their uses and also kind of met a lot of people who also had similar interests in herbs. And we we got some funding to run some projects and some courses just to try and get more people involved. But I always found that um, kind of applying for funding and then doing a project in courses was quite annoying because you, it's hard then to get funding again. And we kind of wanted to be a bit more resilient and not have to rely on other people's decisions for funding. And at the same time, I noticed that lots of community gardens and people's home gardens and um, even in public spaces, herbs were just everywhere and were really abundant. And people weren't really picking them that much or making that much use of them. And so my idea kind of came that what if we harvested some of these herbs and created tea blends that we could sell locally and then use that little bit of money to run the courses, which then teach people how to use use them wow. um, so that's kind of how it all started well, that's incredible isn't it where did you get all your knowledge from though um I think so I did a couple of just like short courses at other kind of gardens <laughs> in London and then uh, I just read a lot and um kind of taught myself along the way and I think because gardening I sort of learned in a similar way of just very practical I did a permaculture course um and found that there were lots of people wanting to share knowledge. And also the community <coughs> courses were great because people from, especially in Hackney, all different cultures mm. and people would always be like, oh, in this country, in my country, there's this herb and like, don't know what's cool, but oh, we use it for cool, this. And yeah. people got really excited about sharing mm. um, sharing that knowledge. So I, le- I kind of learned a lot myself, but also learned from lots of other people along the way. That's, That's great. Cool. It really helps you learn because we always think in the UK it's that sage, mint, thyme, chives, it all feels like the same, doesn't it? But yeah. great to learn outside of that. Um, I've got a couple of questions before we move on. Kind of, Firstly, what has made the difference in success? Do you think being in Hackney, an area that is a little bit alternative, people are encouraged to have, you know, nice, interesting hobbies, not as much as you would in a small town in the countryside. Do you think that's made a difference as well as the timing? Because a lot of people are getting back to nature. Kind of, I guess what I'm saying is, why, mm. why now? Yeah. Why, yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I think definitely, so somewhere like, Hackney we do have we've got a lot of really nice green spaces but Mm -hmm. equally there's loads of new flats and buildings where people have got you know maybe they're lucky if they've got a little balcony Mm -hmm. space um, but a lot of people who don't have access to kind of green space or even green space they can kind of Mm -hmm. get their hands dirty and like the park's great but you can't like Mm -hmm. do that much in in the park Um, but I think also we kind of I think Hackney Herbal was really unintentionally planned for the kind of wellness, well-being, okay. like, expl- uh-huh. <laughs> explosion. So a lot of people really just interested in um, kind of looking after their health more and seeing what they can do more, mm-hmm. more natural ways of doing that. Um, and also people 
getting more into plants and nature but I mm. think that's kind of mm. it just happened that that was the same time as we started yeah. doing I'm just wondering if would it have worked like 15 or 20 years ago because you know we always talk about this in the podcast mm. don't we Ellen? Yeah. Mm. when we were kids we were ashamed to be interested in plants and when I was <laughs> 13 years old I was making all sorts of herb concoctions but it definitely wasn't something I was telling my friends that yeah. I was doing so yeah, right. I wonder if you know it is the time now and that's why it's been such a success yeah I feel like yeah. it's come much more into the mainstream now mm. and it's Especially with um, with herbs and kind of making your own remedies and things, there's like a newfound kind of interest and a newfound mm. respect for it. Mm. And a lot of a lot of things like even kind of when you look at um, what some of the money from research is going into, like there's really interesting research on rosemary, for example, for things like dementia and Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of stuff that in the past people will be like, oh, herbs, yeah. they don't really work. And it's just like yeah. what hippies do in the field. Whereas now I think there is... There is new respect for it. Pretty. Yeah, I we think we say it's a golden time. It yeah. is because yeah. we're we're far more aware of what we're using and what we're putting mm. in our bodies, and that's partly due to the fact that we have access to so much more information. Mm. And so, you know, sometimes when you read certain facts and you know scientific research, it can be quite scary, can't it? So you and we look for other ways to help ourselves, mm. and that's connecting with nature. Um, you know, by means of eating or going outside and gardening. So you've hit it bang on time. Yeah. And, and it's pretty handy being in Hackney since you're Hackney Herbal, really, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, so, I mean, it started here because this is, like, what you know, where I live. It's my community. It's, mm -hmm. like, the, the part of town that I love because I've been, you know, yeah. been here for, like, nearly eight years now. And I think... I think it's also worked well being here because there's so much, there's lots of like craft stuff here in artisans, every, you know, there's new like mm. shops and there's a lot of people running kind of small scale or running independent mm. um, mm -hmm. businesses or um, people running their own stuff. And I think people really buy into that. So people mm. will offer, you know, when we've done markets, people will be like, oh, I just, I really want to get a gift for my mum to show her like, mm. you know, this is from where I live now in the city. That's and cool. Nice, and I think yeah. people really buy into that local, you know, yeah. kind of that whole idea of shopping local. Mm. So it was meant to be basically. Yeah. <laughs> Hackney Herbal was meant to be. Yeah. But it all feels like an antidote to technology, doesn't it, in a way? Mm. Like as we yeah. felt we were all getting more yeah. absorbed into technology. Totally. It then started to reverse a lot and then we're getting back to those natural remedies. Mm. Ironically, ironically, we find all that support and information online but yeah, yeah that's but then hopefully we're kind of trying to create mm. that balance yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want to take technology balance. away yeah. but just to balance it out perhaps somehow um, you know it, you, you're you obviously passing on all of this fantastic knowledge that you've got you and the team here at um, Hackney Herbal and you do courses and workshops don't you so can you tell us a bit more about those yeah so we kind of run um, I suppose our, as well as you know selling the tea our kind of I suppose our main passion is around teaching people other ways of doing it so we're not set out to be like a new big tea company new big herbal tea company it's more about um showing people how they can do a lot of this stuff themselves mm -hmm. and, and just do it in their own homes and <clears throat> their own gardens if they've got gardens so our courses are all around everything from kind of growing herbs whether it's on a balcony or on a windowsill to making their own teas and making simple remedies um so this um, time of year and kind of in, going into the winter we do a lot of things like making cough syrups um, okay. making mm -hmm. kind of other infused things like cider vinegars and things that you can use to support your own well-being mm -hmm. so uh, the aim is to like kind of pass on enough knowledge and confidence for people to go away and then try it at home mm -hmm. and have the confidence to do that and show people where they can buy some of the ingredients and things and just try and take away this idea that to do this stuff is really expensive and really yeah. difficult because a lot of um, kind of mainstream health wellness stuff comes with quite a hefty price tag and mm -hmm. it doesn't need to. Yeah. Um, and, and also, I guess, specifically, <coughs> like, especially where you're based, you've got, there's obviously lots of flats and apartments around here. So it's showing people that they don't need a really big space to do yeah. it. You can do it in super small spaces. Yeah, exactly. And I think there's there's been a whole wave of people who have, like, gone through the whole like grow your own thing got really into it and I think for some people that's still quite like daunting and a bit overwhelming mm. and I think for some people saying like the nice thing about herbs is you can grow pretty much all of them in pots yeah. mm. um, not everything on your windowsill but you can grow some things like basil and coriander yeah. and things and it's kind of showing people that you can do a little bit even mm. if it doesn't grow into a massive plant it's mm. still a way that I you can herbs are probably one of the easiest part. edibles to begin with aren't they really? yeah. yeah exactly yeah. and a lot of them are perennial so you know as long mm. as you don't kill it or it doesn't 
get killed by something mm-hmm. else. You don't have to replant them every year, a lot of them. So it's just easier, and they're much more forgiving plants than mm-hmm. vegetables. <laughs> okay. where, where do you grow your herbs, though? Have you got a patch at home? or? Um, yeah, so I've got a little garden at home where I grow uh, a lot of stuff. Um, uh-huh. But the project, so we have, um, there's a community garden on Mare Street where um, I kind of started out volunteering. So there's, there's lots of herbs growing there. Uh-huh. Um, and we also have a little, uh, some raised beds at Hackney City Farm. Um, so we grow some of the stuff down there and they've been really supportive of the project so we run a lot of workshops uh, Mm -hmm. and courses there and then we also forage so kind of all around the marshes kind of on the edge of Hackney is amazing for things like elder and nettles yeah loads of like things like hawthorn yeah it's an amazing Mm. um, amazing resource and it's also somewhere which we tell you know if you haven't got any space or time Mm. or you just don't want to grow things there's loads you can just go and find if Mm -hmm. you can you know if you go out into into that, that area but it's um there was an article recently about fungi and people were starting to get annoyed that people were foraging fungi. Yeah. Do you think that will then start to affect how we're picking elder in the wild um, and nettle leaves and even blackberries? Yeah, know? it's a really good point, actually, because mm. things... I mean, especially... Like, one thing is obviously really being careful and knowing what you're picking because there's also a lot of stuff that will kill you if you mm-hmm. pick the wrong thing. Um, the thing I've noticed about elderflower is that people, because a lot of a lot more canals now on the canalways, and there's loads of elder down along all the canal kind of pathways. Um, and I've kind of noticed last year there's um, not that many berries on a lot of the trees because obviously oh, people are going yeah. there taking all the flowers, and then yeah. you don't get the berries in the autumn. So yeah. um, I think it's you know it's it's that thing of like. Not every, you know, given our population size, not everyone can mm. enjoy it if it's a really small thing. But just we try and tell people to be mindful when they're foraging for things and mm. to, ne- you know, to pick from different areas and not take like all the, you know, rose hips off one. Because mm. there are a lot of plants you wouldn't grow in your own garden, aren't they? Yeah, it's just being <laughs> no very aware. I, it's just being <laughs> respectful, isn't it? I think yeah. to, to nature and other people at mm. the same time. Um, you and I met, didn't we, on a co- on a workshop with Thrive, yeah. social and therapeutic horticulture. So it's all to do with you know, working with plants and gardening to help with physical and mental illness. Um, and I know you implement some of those well-being um, things here, don't you, at Hackney Herbal? I mean, you do courses? and Yeah, so we do. Um, so as well as our kind of ticketed events and open workshops that anyone can just sign up, buy a ticket and come to, um, we run a lot of free community stuff. And that's sort of, again, where a lot of the passions for starting it in the first place and trying to make this knowledge and... Um, uh, teaching people or sharing ideas around herbs as free and accessible as possible so we work in partnership with a couple of mental health charities um, so we work with a place called the Centre for Better Health mm-hmm. and also our local mind um, and we get um, some funding to run courses there and as sort of drawing on it's as much as um, the activity itself of obviously growing and being outside and making things which is you know mindful and kind of takes people away mm-hmm. in itself as well as the actual remedies that people are being being taught about so for those classes we talk a lot about um, herbs that are very calming that are good for stress things that are good for sleep um it's kind of a big focus of those of the more kind of therapeutic side of what we're doing I mean, they just link in with well-being don't they mm-hmm. they're intrinsic i think yeah because you your herbs are good for you in many different ways but it's also the fragrance can stimulate Mm. memories can't they and yeah. they you know t- you know the touch and everything <clears throat> about them and uh, using herbs to help people's well-being is something we should probably do far more so what you're doing here is really really fantastic mm. it's really cool it yeah. is really cool um in part two we're going to find out more about kind of the cosmetics the cooking and home remedy side but before we move on is there any kind of i love the folklore around plants there's, <laughs> yeah. there's a piece of folklore about al camilla mollis i don't know if either of you guys will know that only do, that it just that grows way? everywhere no, but do, you know, <laughs> do you know the folklore about the water drops no yeah oh why oh, yeah, yeah, yeah tell us no tell you us. tell it no no you tell it um it's so a if lady I, thing if I, if I <laughs> remember it so the uh, if people if, if you've ever seen mm. water on the you know that looks leaves. beautiful mm. yeah and so in the past the alchemists would collect that water mm-hmm. um, and then use it as part of their potions and things that they would make make up as kind of like a really pure mm. form of water but, but this is where folklore is there's so many different stories because mm. I heard that the alchemists then used it to 
help ease menstrual pain in ladies. Yeah, so it's useful yeah, like so. not just the raindrops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you what, if you plant it, <laughs> you're going to have a lot of it. So go ahead and collect that it's water. It's a beautiful flower. How can you not? It is, and it's actually really lovely to cut and put in with exactly. other cut flowers. But it's just mm. a nightmare when it starts mm. self seeding. But anyway, any other bother. folklore that you know, um, or any that you've tried yourself? <laughs> oh, I feel like I should try and think of a really good story here. <laughs> Make one up. We'll never know the difference. <laughs> I actually have. <laughs> it's only us. No one else is listening. Um, I don't know how much. Fo- it's not so much folklore, but it's a really good herb story that mm-hmm. I always tell. Okay. And it came from the caretaker of this building, Oki, who's this great guy. And um, he would often see me coming in at the studio when we first moved in. He was like, what is your business? He's like, you've got a business with leaves. You've got leaves in there. And I was like, explaining kind of what we do. And um, and he was telling me how, so he's from Nigeria originally, he was telling me how in his village, uh, I think it's his auntie, it was, you know, the, the woman who everyone goes to when they're sick. And he kind of, he told me this story about how um, the, like the hunters from the village who would go out into the bush and get all the, gather all the food and the berries and things. Um, they were out one day and they were, by accident, they shot... Um, there was like a rogue shot that hit like a, a gorilla um, and then they watched how the the mum gorilla I imagine like took certain leaves and different plants to kind of put on to like wow. clean the wound and then take a different plant to then dress and oh. kind of treat the the baby and then what they and then they so they collected all those things and took them back to the village and then they just um, they kind of took one of their goats or something and just made a cut you know kind of um made a wound on it and then followed the same thing and found that those things worked as like a really good like one was obviously you know the antifungal <coughs> antiseptic mm-hmm. cleaning thing the other thing was a different leaf that probably had something that stimulated new growth and um, I mean whether it's true it's just a really great uh, story yeah. it was also one of the things they always talk about was how we've learned a lot by watching what animals do mm. in nature yeah, and we've got a lot of our knowledge from um, from that and how animals have that intuition of knowing to just like knowing what to go use. to the hedge and eat something. I mean, I'm it. partly excited by that story and partly feeling really sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think they, they, t- they took like a bad situation and learnt something from it. Yeah. But um, what about the goat? <laughs> I think the goat, I it think was it was healed. fine. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't kill the They didn't kill the <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much. <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit more... Um, about herbs and what we can do at home. So some remedies and things about cosmetics and that kind of thing as well. It's so great to learn about Hackney Herbaland and to spend some time in their Herbal HQ as well. I know, it's really cool. (laughs) Really loving it here. And, you know, we're drinking the special tea blend too. I've always loved herbs and I don't know if I told you Ellen but when I was a kid I had a herb nursery as well when I was just 12 years old did you I was selling herbs yeah through mail order from through adverts in the back of garden as well magazine wow that's <laughs> such an entrepreneur you are such an entrepreneur <laughs> what were you growing I was growing like about 20 different types of mint 15 types of thyme sage all the colorful sages as well i used to have them laid out alphabetically in my back garden took over you know my dad's vegetable plot with my you know herb sales and i was selling them through the post but also at the local wi market yeah. and at weekends making up all these crazy remedies and herbal teas you were a true dandelion coffee i was really you know always doing some crazy experiment with herbs that's super cool and they are fascinated by them they are fascinating Mm. all of their herb you know all of the properties that they have for Mm. us and our health not just their fragrance and Mm. their you know beautiful look and I grow herbs on my balcony, so you know here in Hackney, obviously there's loads of apartments and um, you don't need much space at all. You don't need much yeah. space at all, and I've got all sorts growing mm. on the balcony. I've got um, some stevia growing. No way, the sugar yeah, plant. Yeah, the sugar plant. And do you Very use it in sweet. your cups of tea? Yeah, I don't have yeah. sugar. I would use that instead if I need to sweeten anything. Uh-huh. I've got the mushroom plant, which is uh-huh. quite good. Cool. But I've got rosemary and parsley, you know, thyme, sage, all of those the herbs. The flavours are all the so exciting. The flavours are fantastic. Mm. And you can grow them anywhere. And... Um, there's lots of things you can grow anywhere, as Nat is about to discuss. There is, with well, us. yeah, we're going to talk about one of those taboo plants coming up, and I wonder if anyone out there has tried it. So, before we have a chat further about using herbs in cosmetics and other things that we can do at home, I think we should just have a little chat about cannabis. Oh, what a taboo! <laughs> dun, dun, dun. You know, it's. Um, 
you hear other communities and countries using it medicinally and we hear fantastic stories about that as well and great outcomes and it's not really used here in the UK in that way is it what are your Mm. thoughts on that um yeah it's a really interesting topic because just as you've said like I've heard from lots of the people that we work with a lot of community members who talk about um, how they use it and have used it medicinally and how their, you know, their, in their ancestors have used it um, in really positive ways. Uh, and I think it's also, quite an interest, it's also quite an interesting one to discuss in terms of young people as well, because there's obviously a lot of problems with um, young people using a lot of cannabis and it's sort of almost like a really good entry point to talk to young people about plants and mm-hmm. the power of plants okay. and yeah. other things, because it's sort of like, you know, if you think that one thing that you're smoking is the only thing that's going to have a positive effect on you, like what about all these other plants mm-hmm. that may be kind of safer and like less addictive and all that kind of stuff. So it's quite an interesting entry point I think for yeah. a lot of people who might not um kind of be interested be interested mm. in seeing this kind of very yeah. flowery like hippie but they, you know do. they have to realize that they are actually smoking a plant at the yeah. end of the day so exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. well plants are responsible for so much of our day-to-day lives anyway. they are but there's yeah. lots of research that have shown, has shown mm-hmm. that it's certainly taken away pain from cancer patients mm. and some reports that it's cured cancer um i know somebody who says that it's helped with their uh, gluten intolerance Mm. and personally i think it needs to be researched more and Mm. obviously it needs to be carefully researched and i understand (coughs) you know what we need to think about but at the end of the day it's a herb yeah yeah. (laughs) well let's move on to some other herbs that we can grow at home because there's a bit of a buzzword at the moment which is kind of herb craft and you teach a lot of herb craft, and that obviously includes cooking, cosmetic kind of remedies. Um, tell us a little bit more about some of those kind of remedies. In particular, I mean, we've got herbal tea in front of us right now. Let's talk about herbal tea and how that can help us cut down on caffeine, for example. Yeah, so um, is the really nice thing about herbal tea is it's something you can kind of enjoy just for taste. You know, you can just mm. use the things that you like the taste of, but you can also choose the herbs based on the properties that they mm-hmm. have. And it's a really, when you talk about herbs as medicines, a tea is a really like safe way to take them. So it's quite a low dose. You don't have to really worry about too many. But is it such a low dose that it wouldn't have an effect? Because I can imagine a lot of burly men kind of like, well, it's just like pee. <laughs> I was going to say pee. <laughs> um, but yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, is that too low a dose to have an effect on me? Or no, is it so- then in my mind that it's working or what? Yeah, so it's still going to have an effect, but it's not going to be, um, it's not going to be uh, like a strong enough concentration that you have to worry if you mm-hmm. if you do have a medical condition or mm-hmm. if you're taking other medication, you don't have okay. to worry. Mm-hmm. Um, for, for most of, the, like for all the herbs that we talk about in our courses, there are some that you have to be obviously more careful mm-hmm. with. Um, but it's the idea that people can then go away and do it themselves. So make teas that are good for mm-hmm. sleep, um, or um, use other herbs that might be good for their digestion and mm-hmm. could be things that people are cooking with like things mm. like mint and um, okay. fennel so talking of digestion I'm terrible digestion so I get really bad indigestion and I can't drink caffeine because it gives me acid indigestion mm. and if that ever <clears throat> kicks off ginger tea is the way forward mm. it's the only thing I've ever found that stops it yeah Ginger tea. Ginger is a good fix-all, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. great. Very much so, yeah. very good for digestion. I've yeah. heard dandelion as well, I think that's meant dandelion's to be Dandelion's good. good, yeah. The other really yeah. nice thing you can have for um, things like acid reflux or things like heartburn is meadow sweet, mm-hmm. which is a really nice one um, that you can have either fresh or okay. dried. Okay. I'll try it. Yeah. But this herbal tea that we've got here is very nice, isn't it? This is a bit it? of a blend, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah. this is actually something... It's a mega mix. <laughs> yeah. This is something called the mega mix, which um, mega mix. <laughs> came about when we just... You know, when we're doing all our blending and making up our different um, herbal blends uh-huh. and things, there's always, like, odds and ends of things left over. And... Wait, tell me this is leftovers. <laughs> it's not yeah. left- this leftovers. is the bubble and squeak of the tea world. <laughs> <laughs> left, but the best kind of, le- you know, leftovers. Uh-huh. Um, so... Ah, oh, this is the mix. Yeah, Let's so see. we mixed it all together mm-hmm. one day, and we're like, oh, let's just try it. And then you know, sometimes when we do workshops and we've got leftover herbs, they go on the dry. <laughs> rack mm-hmm. um but they might they might also be bits that kind of we wouldn't you know we wouldn't sell mm-hmm. um and so we just mix them all up into a pot um mm-hmm. and one day we're like oh well, maybe we should try it <laughs> and then it yeah it tasted really good so and it worked out well i think yeah. you know that's yeah. with herbs you can mix and match can't you you can mm-hmm. mix the ones that you may help you but also for your taste too yeah exactly and often we 
tell people, you know, if you want to have something like sage, which is really good for sore throats and colds, um, but tastes quite sagey, yeah. and so it tastes like, you know, you're drinking sausages. <laughs> then, um, you know, mix it with things like lemon balm or even things like peppermint, mm. things what that are a bit... honey? Yeah, you can use, yeah, actually, I mean, sage yeah. and honey is really, is actually quite okay. nice. Um, mm. But you can you can blend based on the balance out bitter with sweet thing or, yeah. And if people are making their own herbal teas at home, do the herbs need to be dried or can they use them in a fresh state? What yeah. is better? Um, yeah, people, this question comes up a lot. So yeah. you can use either. Mm-hmm. So generally with fresh herbs, you tend to use double the amount just because they're full of, okay. for most herbs, they're mm-hmm. full of water. And do you need to cut them or tear them? What's the best way to prepare your herbs? I mean, if you've got a teapot, I just say just bung them in. Okay. Like, um, Do you have to crush them, though, to release the oils? At no, all? like, if no. you're... For a tea, if you're boiling, um, you know, just boiling water from the kettle, uh-huh. you don't need to really tear them. Um, okay. The, they'll, the, the goodness will come out of them uh-huh. um, with that water on top. It is good if you're making tea to use a teapot uh-huh. because a lot of the oils in the plants that hold some of the properties, if you just make a tea in your cup you lose a lot of that which is some of the you know that's the smell uh-huh. is the oils okay. escaping so it's quite good I mean it doesn't it's not the end of the world but it's good practice to use a teapot uh-huh. okay and um, one more question on herbal tea I love herbal teas <laughs> <laughs> um, is kind of like what are your go to herbal teas do you drink a different tea at a different time of day are you also um, trying to avoid caffeine and that's why you have herbal teas or is there any caffeine in herbal teas um, for example so in um in all the herbs that we kind of use, all the ones in our tea, they don't have any caffeine mm-hmm. in. There are obviously other plants like um, mate and things that have a similar thing. What's that, sorry? Mate, which is like a South American... Oh, okay, yerba. yerba yeah, yeah, exactly, yerba, oh, okay. yeah. Oh, this is new to me. This is a, um, that's an ilex, isn't it? A type of holly. I yeah, I think yeah, so, yeah. 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 So there are plants like that which have um, not caffeine but a similar <coughs> thing to mm-hmm. caffeine. But all the ones that are in our teas, most of the ones we use don't have any caffeine, mm-hmm. are caffeine-free. Okay. Um, I kind of I gave I kind of gave up coffee, not like intentionally, mm. um, maybe about four years ago. And mm-hmm. I think it might have had something to do with the time when I stopped having to go and work in cafes and buy okay, a coffee, yeah. coffee just to kind of sit yeah, there and not yeah. feel bad. Why um, wouldn't you sit there with a herbal tea? There's because something I kind different of, about coffee, isn't I, there? Because there's a lot here. Yeah. <laughs> I think also because just out of going to a cafe and paying like two pounds for like hot water in a yes, tea bag exactly. and also I did like coffee so it's yeah. kind of like a treat to, to have it um, and so and then I, yeah so I stopped drinking coffee and I don't I do drink tea but not that much tea uh-huh. anymore um, so I drink yeah I drink a lot of herbs in place of yeah, that yeah what is your favourite then? So, I mean, lemon verbena is... Re- I'm not allowed uh-huh. to have favourites, but lemon verbena <laughs> is, um, is really up there. I really like rosemary as well. Rosemary is, like, a really nice one. Mm-hmm. I always say having something like rosemary is quite good in the afternoon, okay. as, um, if you're, especially if you're trying to avoid having, like, another coffee in mm-hmm. the afternoon. Like the three o'clock lull time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so rosemary is a circulatory stimulant, so it's really good for helping to kind of... Um, it's really good for things like concentration and focus uh-huh. and it's mildly analgesic so it can help if you've got a bit of a dull headache in the afternoon okay. and you're trying to power uh-huh. on and then it doesn't have you know if you have a coffee late in the day so I have it when I'm working late as well sometimes you don't get that buzz mm-hmm. and then the crash okay. and then you don't kind of feel uh-huh. like you then can't go to sleep when you finally right. finish oh, that's a very good tip so that's a three yeah. o'clock three yeah. o'clock tea now yeah. I think and then before you go to bed what tea would you have there um, chamomile is obvious, but is there yeah, any other choices? So chamomile is kind of like a go-to. So we yeah. have um, one of the blends we make is called sort of the Dream Blend, and that has yeah. things like um, skull cap. Okay, which is scutellaria. Really lovely, yeah. yeah. So in okay. skull cap is a sedative and a nervine, so it's also really good to have during the day if you're stressed or anxious. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also helps kind of unwind mm. um, before you go to sleep. Um, or things like lemon verbena is another good one. Another uh-huh. good sleep. Yeah, one. oh, that's my favourite lemon fragrance. You said yeah, that earlier verbena, on, actually. Yes. We walked by oh, lemon yeah, verbena. It's really lovely. Mm. Um, so we tend to kind of, and a lot of our focus is on those like relaxing, quite sedative herbs, which are mm-hmm. good if you're kind of stressed or if anxiety, you're anxiety, anxiety, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And great. they're also just lovely, like lovely herbs to take like throughout the day. <laughs> I have noticed that, that you are very calm. <laughs> so you obviously drink lots of herbal tea. You don't seem anxious or stressed in any way, shape, or 
physical form. But also, I have to just say this, you have really super lovely skin. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's got to be the herbs. It's, it's the got herbs. to be the herbs, yeah. hasn't it? Do you use herbs in cosmetics? yourself and do you teach how to do that here as well yeah so um one of the really simple things that we will show people how to do in the courses and a lot of the workshops is to make uh, an infused oil using marigolds or cl- like calendula marigolds okay. mm-hmm. um and it's really simple it's kind of showing people how easy it is to make a really nice like skin nourishing thing that's suitable for all skin types and um, we usually show show people how you can then um, infuse your oil and then add things like beeswax or things like um, cocoa butter or other kind of um, waxes and oils to then make, whether it's like a face kind of oil or lip balm or skin balm, um, and kind of use those those things. Mm. What about soaps? Soaps, yeah. So I'm not an expert in soap making. I do make my own soaps, um, and we've done we've done a few soap making workshops, but they're just they're quite stressful to run because. <laughs> but you've got herbal tea. <laughs> <laughs> do them at three o'clock and give everybody a skull yeah, cap tea. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they're a bit stressful because you when you make soap from scratch, you have to. So one of the things you have to use is lye, which is caustic soda. Um, and then so you have that and when you add that in um, it has like a chemical reaction and if you you always have to add the lye which is like a kind of um, or caustic soda which is powdered into the water and if you do it wrong and do it the other way the whole thing explodes <laughs> and then the other thing yes. the other thing you combine it with is like really hot oils and mm-hmm. all the waxes and then you mix the two together and you use like a hand electric hand whisk to, to mix it until it gets to the point it's a bit like making jam like reaching, reaching the setting point mm-hmm. and if you over if you don't whisk it enough when people you know people take home a little mold of it then it won't set but if you over whisk it it turns into like horrible mashed potato thing but you still can make soap from but mm. so in a workshop it's just i always leave with like a terrible migraine yeah and, like, oh my feel quite stressed um, but <laughs> you it's need some, that rosemary too. it's something that a lot of people ask us about so i should maybe yeah. try again <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and obviously you recommend growing herbs what do you think about buying herbs from the supermarket? Mm. Ooh, controversial. Yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Um, so I've done like I've done a few experiments with supermarket mm. herbs, um, and I think it's a bit hit and miss, really, depending on where they're coming from. So okay. I often tell people don't lose heart when you buy shops mm. from, uh, buy herbs from the supermarket and they die on your windowsill, mm-hmm. and kind of explain to them that like you know this pot that they're in is is probably just good enough for one plant, mm. and there's like. 20. Yeah, like 50 <laughs> seeds in there. So, But it doesn't always work if you repot them either, does it? No, so, no. I, yeah, again, mixed results. And, like, my dad, who's, like, really keen, like... <laughs> Just don't, I'm just knocking sorry, the table sorry. over. <laughs> um, yeah, so my dad, who's like really keen growing, will just literally like sit in his greenhouse like all day, just you know, with his music on. Um, he, they, so, you know, he grows basil and things, but they also they sometimes buy some from the supermarket. Mm, and he'll like mm. separate them out. I think basil is one that seems to do yeah. better than maybe some of the other ones. Okay, I, I think I know what the problem is. I don't know if um, if you've realised, but the because they obviously have to be transported, so if mm. the soil was to fall out of the container, then it would obviously make a pretty mess in transporting. Mm. But I think they mix uh, glue into the compost. <gasps> because I used to work for a mail-order plant company. Wow. A lot of our baby plugs were with glue, glue plugs. So the glue is mixed in, and then what you have is this kind of really solid block of compost yeah. that obviously travels a lot easier but it's very difficult to get water to penetrate into there and I think the supermarket herbs are sewn into this glue compost so it doesn't all fall out when they travel but then that makes them very very difficult to care for when you get them home unless you sit them in a reservoir of water perhaps that could be a way around it and then you're really soaking that water in but that I think that's why they're wow. almost... Um, sometimes it seems like they're programmed to die, doesn't uh, yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> I usually say that to people. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's fascinating, I don't know Programmed that about, to die. About no, really, but yeah. I often tell people, you know, this is, this is as close as a plant will ever get to being a test tube baby. It's like mm, being grown mm. inside with grow lights. Mm. It's been nice and warm, and then suddenly you've got it home to your mm. probably, like, Same shady, as buying from like IKEA things. plants sometimes. Yeah, but exactly. they do still survive, do you know what mm. I mean? So there's... There's got to be something more to it. Mm. Yeah. So generally, perhaps stay away from supermarket herbs, but don't be discouraged if you've got some. Mm. And but yeah, I think if I think if you need them, it's nice to buy because it's they're fresher, obviously, than buying some of the other things. Mm. But I think don't um, 
don't beat yourself up if they, yeah. if yeah. they die. Well, I guess they're so easy to grow from seed anyway. Yeah. Or yeah. what about if people are buying the cut herbs in the plastic packets? Can they root those in water? Would that yeah. be a way around it? Um, I've tried that with yeah. like again with mixed results, but things like rosemary and mm-hmm. things like I mean mint always works because yeah. it's an like, <laughs> easy thing to just put. You in, can't stop mint in water. water. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's always worth. I always say to people, it's always worth trying. Yeah. And, you know, plants don't always mm-hmm. behave. They're like people they don't always behave in the way that mm. they're. That's what I always say. <laughs> meant to. So just like people, people don't behave right, do they? Yeah, yeah. It's worth just like people. <laughs> So you are also connected to the Herb Society, aren't you? So you, your life is basically one big <laughs> bundle of herbs. One big herb breed, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell us about that. What, do, what are you doing with the Herb Society? Um, so I joined the Herb Society as a trustee a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, yeah, I joined kind of wanting to find out a bit more about their work and mm. um, try and help in some way or kind of link in what we were doing to kind of be connected with the, you know a, a wider network like we're quite focused obviously Lon- you know in London mm-hmm. but it's interesting to see what the rest of the UK is doing okay. mm-hmm. um, so we've just kind of been looking at I sort of helped initially with some of the social media stuff but also just mm-hmm. helping with thinking about more long term strategy okay. um, mm-hmm. and also we're looking at the moment about what we can do with a bit more of a focus around education um, and some stuff maybe with schools and children but dare I say you're probably a younger face in the Herb Society. How, <laughs> yeah. how have you been received? How, how uh, has that gone? I think really well. So I think they were really yeah. trying to recruit for younger... I mean, they're always trying to recruit for younger uh, members. Oh, were you headhunted? Um, <laughs> headhunted? I actually saw something on Twitter, which was okay. really interesting, because I was like, I wouldn't have heard about the Herb Society mm. if, it hadn't, if they hadn't been on mm-hmm. social media, unless I'd seen it exactly. at an event. Yeah. Um, mm. So I think it's been quite good to have... Um, there's a few of us who joined her a bit younger, just kind of come in and um, give an insight into what our generation are like and maybe what they might buy into in terms of joining. Mm-hmm. Okay. The cannabis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what is, um like, other than kind of your workshops, your courses, what, what does a typical day for you involve here at Herbal HQ? Um, a typical day, so no two days are really ever the same, but a typical day might be, um, so we might have, so today we had a course in the morning, so we were running um, a course with a group of really lovely women who are based in Hackney, um, and the course is all around, it's aimed at people who are unemployed, so it's aimed around kind of building skills and confidence and people meeting each other, um, so we were making um, something called Fire Cider which is, again, a really easy thing to make. So you just, um, all you need is apple cider vinegar and you just um, fill, a, fill a jar or a jam jar with that and then add in things like ginger. Um, you can use powdered spices like chilli and turmeric and um, garlic and we use things like horseradish and rosemary and you leave it to infuse for like four weeks and then you get this stuff that you can just drink, which if you've got a cold will just like kill everything. Wow. Um, but you can use it in the winter <gasps> to build your You need that system. recipe. Yeah, it's great. Um, so it's doing that in the morning and then um in the afternoon I might be in here so we've got at the moment we've got people who are ordering like bespoke herbal tea blends so Mm -hmm. a couple of places like yoga studios and things who um want to kind of stock our teas but also have their own like house blend Mm -hmm. so it might be um putting some herbs together um and then in sometimes in the evenings when I'm working so we have like a herb group who are, uh, are a group of people who have come to a course um, in the past and it was the idea of the herb group is it's a monthly thing which brings people back together Um, and we're hoping that next year we can do something more regularly and maybe have a weekly meet up in one of the gardens do you get any time off get that much time off <laughs> um but i'm sure yeah it's kind of it's you know when it's something you're really passionate about it's really hard yeah, to take when time your off. passion becomes your career you know we often chat about this yeah. don't we ellen it's like we're just yeah. doing parts all the time it's yeah. all we think about that's, yeah that's because it. you're doing what you love yeah. so it doesn't feel like work sometimes yeah where can we find you on social media then where can we find hackney herbal um so we're on twitter instagram and facebook mm-hmm. at hackney herbal yeah and website uh, oh. hackneyherbal.com and what about if anyone would like to help you out or come along and volunteer yeah so if you go onto our website um, there's a like if you go onto the volunteer tab you can just send us a message cool. um, that way beautiful great right. well, thank you very much thank you thank you <laughs> I 
I've just pressed the record button with my nose. How cool am I? <laughs> now your sweaty nose tips on my phone screen. But I'm multitasking. <laughs> As a freelancer would. Exactly. And what are we talking about today? Say it in unison. Freelancing. Oh, like Banana <laughs> Who's our third person, though? Uh, the dog. <laughs> yeah, we've got two lovely dogs sleeping by us at the oh, moment. Oh, they're really cute. Aren't they? Aren't they? Like, they're like in a little S shape. I know. Well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, but that's what you can do when you're freelancing. You can work with your dogs next You can, time, you, you can. And you can also lay on a comfy sofa watching yeah. Emmerdale on Catch Up and keep in touch with your emails by dictation. Yes. Yeah, do amazing. you know what, Ellen? I have to confess. I've sometimes written articles laying horizontally watching Hollyoaks using dictation and it seems yeah. crazy that I can earn money doing that I know because you wouldn't be able to do that in the workplace but why not what What does it matter because I was just as creative I was probably more creative than if I would be sitting at a desk being forced to work that is, exa- that is exactly oh, the key isn't it it's I your feel creativity so, yeah I feel so um, privileged yeah. to be able to do that feels yeah. like it does it feels really it kind of feel if you think about it it's sort of sexy you know Mm -hmm. because you're allowing your creativity to happen and be however wherever you want and that's what freelancing gives you which is ace isn't it where's the strangest place you wrote an article then Ellen Mary the strangest (laughs) place I've written an oh my gosh an article is not the strangest but I'm going to tell you because I can't think of a strange place I'm going to tell you the nicest place Uh it was on Balmoral Beach in um, Sydney so I was over there for a while because my husband works out Mm. there a lot and I decided I was going to walk to the beach and the beach I went to took way longer to get there it took me ages to get there because I was just admiring all of the trees and plants and it was just so I'm always the same when I walk somewhere it takes me at least 50% longer than yeah just because you're taking photographs (laughs) and admiring all the plants and everything around you and I realised that because it's taken me so long and then if I was going to do the same walk back I might as well just get on and do what I needed Mm. to do there and I sat on the beach and I can remember typing at least two articles sitting there and there was a um, a shark out in the water. So the helicopter kept coming over. Really? Yeah, and though it was netted, so the mm. beach is netted, so obviously you could swim so far out, yeah, yeah, yeah. but there was um, a shark <coughs> out in the water. Oh. And I can remember just sitting there typing. But you know what? I felt almost like a whole sense of joy. Yeah. Everyone was safe, so there's no problem. But I was sitting on this beach <laughs> on the other side of the world, oh. and it was, it must have been October, November. And so I'm writing a different seasonal yeah. article on this beautiful hot beach with a shark out in the water. Having an epiphany. It was just, it was a really, it was just beautiful and I just sat there and thought, how lucky am I? Really, it's, I'm the same because my, you know, my partner from time to time has worked in New York, now in China and so sometimes I'm there doing my work remotely because, you know, apart from TV appearances and, you know, different things that I do that I need to be there in person, you know, a lot of what I do is online and also a lot of what I do is discovering what people do in other cultures in in horticultural terms so it you do have to pinch yourself from time to time but of course it's still hustle and it's still hard work because you know what it's like being freelance you do feel like you have to be switched on all the time now like if you were working in an office you don't necessarily have to work when you're away from your desk i know it's changed a bit with emails coming through on iPhones, but generally you don't have to work a weekend. That's quite rare. Yeah. But as a freelancer, we would. And also, from that moment we wake up in the morning, we feel like we have to be productive. Yes. As well. Yeah. And that I've t- it's taken quite a while to get used to that actually. Mm. And sometimes I will type copy or answer some urgent emails before I've even got out of bed. Mm. And some days I felt really guilty about that. But actually... Why guilty? Why do I feel... Yeah, because actually it doesn't matter whether I get up first and then do them or do them in bed and then get up because they're being done. And that's what freelance life kind of affords. It's weird, doesn't it? it? But it's a really hard balance to get because it's actually really hard work. The amount of hours I work are actually probably more than if I worked in an office. Yeah, for sure. Way more. But... But you know, whenever can... we have time off, we feel guilty. Yeah. Which is strange. Yeah, yeah. It is, isn't it? It's really so odd. Weird. And like any of my friends will probably be like, oh, Michael does nothing. Yeah. I do a heck of a lot. Yeah, <laughs> you know? definitely. Yeah. But it's hard to define it as well. It if someone is. asks what your, what your role is, what do you say? Um, it, do you know, it depends. A 
essentially, I'm a gardener. Do you know what mm. I mean? So it depends on where I am, what I'm doing, who I'm talking to. If someone's asking, and I can't even really be bothered to mm. explain, because sometimes you just get tired of it. Yeah, but then they'll it. ask you why they're And I just <laughs> say, I'm a gardener. And because, that, you know, that is what I am. But I generally say I'm a writer, mm. radio show host, you know, I do anything to do with gardening. Mm. And often people look really confused at that. They're like, mm, well, what, yeah, does, that, what so does that mean? Describe. Yeah, I don't really know oh. how else to describe it. I do you also, um, something I do, I, I have a play down or don't mention doing TV work. Because the minute if, you know, like one of my main roles at the moment is being a TV presenter. Yeah. But then to introduce yourself as that to someone is so weird because people have this kind of fame weirdness and I'm not introducing myself as a TV presenter to be boastful egotistical but the other person may see it that way or if they're kind of then <laughs> starstruck by it then it's weird and you don't really want but then and how else to describe what I'm doing yeah because that's it so have you tried it I don't know have, like next time somebody says to you what do you do mm. j- respond by saying oh, I'm a horticultural TV presenter I guess so I always kind of and answer in a really say. sketchy way that makes me sound like a drug dealer <laughs> <laughs> I'm always kind of like yeah I just do a few different projects you know <laughs> but it is it's, it's horrible it's really difficult to a kind of explain what I do and B deliver that in a way that isn't yeah. boastful, weird, yeah, or I kind agree. of yeah. yeah, or, uh, or, uh, yeah, or you could just say to someone, that. "Do you not know who I am?" Then you know, it's, I'd love to. But it's do not that. even that because just for fun. you know, do we do stuff on TV? But by no stretch of the imagination are we famous. Oh gosh, you no, know, geez, and, no, no, and no. it's not even. No, I don't know. I think sometimes how people imagine this stuff is compared to how it is is very different yeah very different indeed it's interesting though isn't it i love i do love freelance life there are days where i i get tired of it and you know sometimes can't be bothered but that might be the time to have a day off yeah you know and that's allowing yourself Mm. to do that and that's what's really really Mm. hard isn't it because you do work at weekends obviously i yeah i work at weekends and i have to be careful to then make sure i've got the time off in the week yeah but because everyone else works in the week you feel kind of your inner what do you call it compass is telling you yeah. to work as well yeah right? that's that's yeah. very true yeah. it is and sometimes creativity doesn't come at the time no. for what we do but it has to come before uh, a deadline <laughs> it, has, it has to come before yeah. a deadline no matter what but if you were working say you were working a nine to five you have to do what you're doing in that mm. period but if i i some days i can sit down to write copy and there's nothing there mm. i've got nothing and I know the deadline's tomorrow, so I might go away for an hour and yeah. go and potter in the garden, sow some seeds. But then I might be working till 11 o'clock that yeah. night, writing that copy. And you won't be doing that in an you office. Know. But yeah. I always find, yeah, if I'm ever working at kind of the table during the day and I have a break, I always feel weird and guilty. But then if I was in an office environment, yeah. I'd probably merrily be wandering around chatting to people. That's wasted time. But when yeah. it's now me as a freelancer, I feel like anything that's not this focused head down is wasting time. You know? No gossiping yeah. around the uh, water. Exactly. Machine. No one to or gossip to, is there? Yeah. <laughs> you can't plant your bum on the photo oh. and take a copy. <laughs> <laughs> But it is, yeah, it's very weird. I love it. But I don't think you ever shake that feeling of guilt. No. Um, or kind of restlessness, you know? Isn't that a cool word? Restlessness. restlessness. It's like cell a door. Yes, you kind of just never Lovely really... <laughs> do you think? Yeah. You never really relax, I suppose, 100%. No. Unless you're away away from it, maybe. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, it's almost like you don't relax on weekends as a freelancer. You almost have to have those real time out holidays and they become more I guess the holidays become more of an extreme contrast really because you have to you have to really switch off so yeah yeah wouldn't change it though wouldn't change it for the world not at all not at all but I think a lot of people see it as a big old holiday but really it's kind of yes it's fun and we're privileged but it is hard work as well yes (laughs) it is sir (laughs) are you going to eat the rest of your cookie now what? You've I mean, got half a oh, cookie there. Oh, another one in the bag. Oh, you've oh, got right, two so. cookies. Yeah. <laughs> it's a chocolate and what's it? You need that to feed your creativity, huh? <laughs> exactly. The Plant Based Podcast is sponsored by Sutton's, suppliers of Gardner's favourite products since 1806. Unsurprisingly, Sutton's now have everything you need for your outside space. 
award-winning flower and vegetable plants, garden furniture and equipment, plus gifts for gardeners. Visit them online at suttons.co.uk. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Plant Based Podcast. Have a browse of the rest of the library or hop on over to the website, which is theplantbasedpodcast.net. You'll also find our social media links. Please connect with us and let us know about any plant based projects that you think we should be covering on the show. And make sure you subscribe to our podcast so you'll be the first to hear the next episode. We're releasing once a fortnight. So until next time, enjoy the world of plants.